Hello, neighbors. I'm Sean, one of the pastors here at North Cross. I welcome you to this experience of Church Online with us here. And we just uh, thank you for the, taking the opportunity to be in worship with us this way. We pray that uh, we'll be able to take next steps together. And to do that, we'd like to know a little bit more about you. What are your needs? What are your interests? What are your hopes and dreams? One of the ways you can communicate that with us is through the North Cross app. If you click the Connect card there, you'll have an opportunity, again, to share some of that information with us. On the app, you'll also find other tools we've designed that we believe are, are potentially helpful for you in the experience of worship online. So again, I'm going to invite you to take a look at that North Cross app. There'll be other things that'll pop up in the context of worship and, and after worship, uh, scrolling announcements, and perhaps you've already been taking a look at those. And again, if there's anything that you'd like to know more about or take a next step with us in, please uh, reach out to us so that we can best resource you. With all of that said, friends, again, just welcome to worship. Thank you for being a part of this. And as we enter into worship, I'm going to just invite us now to, to center ourselves, to frame this experience beginning with prayer. Will you pray with me? Great and awesome God, the God who meets us right where we are and helps us uh, to move deeper into your grace. We pray, God, that the experience of worship that we enter into now would do that very thing, that you would pour your spirit upon us, that we would be filled with your presence. We would respond to your grace with our worship. Would you accept our worship now, God? It's in Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. Amen. Friends, let's stand where you are. Uh, get ready to encounter the Holy Spirit today in worship. Uh, join us in singing a few songs, starting with In the River. Drown sorrow, there is an ocean deeper than fear. The tide is rising, rising. There is a current stirring deep inside, it's overflowing from the heart of God. The flood of heaven crashing over us. The tide is rising.
There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted. Shame is undone in your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts. here to experience your holy presence, to know your spirit, to know you, to hear your word and allow it to change us, change our lives, change our minds. We are not you, and yet sometimes We think we know best. We think we can do no wrong, and it's always somebody else's fault. Lord, I pray you would open our eyes to the ways that our own hearts need to grow. The things that we've done wrong and we need to ask forgiveness 
and that we wouldn't be swallowed up by grief, by shame, by anger, but that we would carry those burdens to you and you would replace them with your grace, your peace, your joy. You would find the corners of our lives that we'd rather not share. You might say, I see you, I love you. We could hear that good word from you and that we would know that we belong here. Not just in this family of believers, but with you and in your kingdom. As a part of the bigger family all around the world. Lord, help us to remember our brothers and sisters in other countries who are suffering such tragedy and such hardship. We lift them up to you. We ask that you would protect them, that in your mercy you would hear our prayers. I pray you would be speaking through Pastor Sean today and his words would become your words that your scripture would come alive to us, helping us grow and, and learn and be transformed. It's through the power of your Holy Spirit we pray. Amen. I've got a question for you. Why are you here? Why are you participating in this worship experience. Are you curious about God? Do you have a question that you hope to find some answer to? Are you just trying to keep your partner happy? Maybe this is something that somebody connected to you is interested in and you're just participating to to kind of keep the peace? Is it that you believe that in the context of worship, we can really experience God? Why are you here? Why are you participating? There are lots of ways we might answer that question. If you are here partly because you believe the United Methodist Church, part of what North Cross is all about, if you believe that the United Methodist Church offers a compelling model for living as a follower of Jesus, and you want to know more about that model, you want to experience that model with others, then I think that that's an interesting answer. That's an interesting way of thinking about worship. I hope that's what you're thinking. I hope that's what you're about. Because I believe that we do offer something as a church that is unique and and, and interesting and, and compelling. With that said, I recognize that some might be participating in this particular expression of of a Christian faith community because it's a compromise. As a, fa- as a matter of fact, I recognize that United Methodism is one of those denominations that's often been characterized as, as being kind of a anything goes denomination. We're criticized as being wishy washy, not taking a clear stance on any particular thing, that whatever you believe, you can just believe it. I don't know if uh, that's your experience or if that's your understanding of the United Methodist Church. And, and, and while I will affirm that some of that could be true, we certainly do affirm openness to lots of different ideas, I do think that we're clear on a few essentials. There, it's not that anything goes. There's, as a matter of fact, there are some things that I believe we consider to be central to who we are as United Methodists, who we are as, I, I hope, just as Christian people. We in the Methodist church call these general rules. And again, while they might not be uniquely Methodist, I do think that they're important and they're central to who we are. The first of these rules is to do no harm. And we follow that with to do good. And finally, the third general rule is to attend the ordinances of God. We've sometimes framed that as to stay in love with God, to continue to build our relationship with God, that there are means of grace that we might employ in strengthening, developing, experiencing of relationship with God. As Scripture puts it, these rules 
all stem from the greatest commandment. That, of course, being to love God, and the second being like it, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Again, I think that's broadly accepted as the heart of Christianity. Love God and love others. And we express that in a couple of different ways, the general rules being one of them. And while there are certainly many ways we can interpret what these ideas mean, love does take many forms after all, every every interpretation should be broadly inclusive. It should be wildly encouraging. And I believe ultimately hopeful. The prophet Joel, one of the prophets contained in our Older Testament, helps me to understand what that could look like. What what we say, love God, love neighbors. What what is that going to practically look like when we live these general rules? So I want to read to you from that prophet, prophet, the prophet Joel. In the second chapter, the 28th verse and following, we hear these words. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. And we say, thanks be to God. Joel, uh, Old Testament prophet, writing this prophecy, this, this idea about what God is in the midst of doing. This, this, this kind of vision for how God is active and present. Of all that we might say about these words, I hope that we do not miss this idea that God's love is for all. The prophet says that God will pour out the Spirit on sons and daughters, old and young, men and women, all who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Let me seek to avoid being wishy-washy. All means all. As I understand it, old, young, women, men, gay, straight, poor, rich, Democrats, Republicans, all means all. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Not some, not a few, not the right ones or the ones that do the things that we think are right. All means all. Now, some, I understand, perhaps, perhaps you here right now will push against this idea. I think some always have and always will. But this day, this experience that we're sharing here is, is in anticipation of Pentecost Sunday. That day, Pentecost, is the day that we celebrate the words spoken by the prophet Joel springing to life among us. On Pentecost, we celebrate the Spirit being poured out. Again, I recognize that some will miss it. Some have always missed it. Some definitely missed it at the very first experience of Pentecost, when the Spirit came among us. The story of Pentecost is recorded in our Newer Testament in the second chapter of Acts. And in that that book, that particular chapter, the disciples are all gathered together in an upper room. They're waiting for the Spirit to come as Jesus told them to wait. They didn't know what to expect. They didn't know what that was going to mean. They didn't know what that was going to look like. Scripture records for us that there was a a sound, a a, a roaring, and a great wind blew into the room. And and then there appeared among the disciples, above their heads, flames like tongues of fire. They began to speak in languages that could be understood by 
all kinds of different people that were gathered in Jerusalem at the time. It was amazing, uh, just perplexing, confusing even to many. Again, while some got it, others missed it. Even with that dramatic entrance, for some, the arrival of the Spirit was, was simply confusing. They even thought, perhaps, that all, this was being ex- all that they could see was being experienced was, was just something that could easily be explained. And their explanation was, clearly, these people had too much to drink. Hear the reaction from those. I just read to you from the scripture itself. Acts 2, verses 12 and 13. Amazed and perplexed, right? The people gathered around. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them. These people that are speaking in languages that other folks could understand said, they've had too much wine. Upon hearing this reaction, right, some people saying they're just partying too hard. Upon hearing that reaction, one of the disciples, Peter, says this. If you just keep reading in in the second chapter of Acts, Peter stood up with the eleven, so all these followers of Jesus, the disciples. He raised his voice and he addressed the crowd, all the people that are, what's going on? Oh, they're just drunk. He addresses that crowd. He says, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people, meaning himself as well, these people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. Now, I've known some people that drink at nine in the morning, so I'm really not sure what kind of defense that is, but apparently in this group, that was not common. They're not drunk. It's it's early in the morning. There must be another explanation. We know... Peter knows that it's the Spirit. Empowered, emboldened, and encouraged by the Spirit, Peter goes on to explain to these folks, using the very words from the prophet Joel that we have shared already here, and goes on to tell the crowd, it's happening right now. What Joel said was going to happen is happening right now. He, He begins to share about Jesus, and he concludes with this. Acts 2, verse 33 Exalted to the right hand of God, he, meaning Jesus, has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you see and hear. Peter says they're not drunk. This was actually what you've been waiting for. This is, this is actually what Joel was talking about many centuries ago. It's happened through Jesus that this Holy Spirit has now come. The wind, the fire, being able to share in, in languages that everybody could understand. Peter is saying, you think these people are partying up. You've missed it. It's the Spirit. And I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to, to overlook this. When the Spirit shows up, some confuse what is happening for a great party. It's the same confusion people had with Jesus. In one of the stories of Jesus' life, the gospel according to Luke, again in our Newer Testament, Luke 5, verses 29 to 34, we hear some of the confusion around how Jesus lived. People thinking, well, is this guy just some kind of party animal? Hear, hear it in Luke 5. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, Right? Kind of sounds like a party, actually. A large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their sect complained to his disciples, why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Now, I'm not really sure if the issue was who Jesus was partying with or the fact that he was just partying. I'm I'm not sure. But Jesus answers this way. It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. They said to him, well, John's disciples, right? This is another, it's actually Jesus' cousin, a, a guy who's, who's been talking about Jesus and sharing what Jesus is going to do. John's disciples 
often fast and pray, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees. But yours go on eating and drinking. (laughs) Jesus says, Can you make the friends of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? Jesus is saying, I'm here now. I'm, I'm, I'm moving, I'm talking, I'm teaching. We're celebrating. There's a party going on right here, right? That's what Jesus is saying. People think that he's just having a good old time. He is having a good time because this is good news. There's been an inbreaking, right, into history. Jesus has come to, to change the course of the world, the, the course of history. And the people that are gathering around him are having their lives impacted. The, the hungry are being fed. The, those, those that are possessed by demons are finding healing. Those that couldn't walk, couldn't see, couldn't hear, have, have, have had all that reversed. And now they've been given new life. Jesus is restoring people to health and vitality. Friends, what else do we celebrate? So it's no surprise to me that that's exactly what Jesus is doing. He's coming around, he's eating and drinking, and people are celebrating around him. And some say, what's going on with this guy? It doesn't surprise me that when the Spirit comes, and there's this great display, that people are, yep, more partying, right? During this particular series, we've been asking the question, who is God? God is the spirit, the life of the party. And when the spirit shows up, things happen. The spirit, you see, is dramatic and surprising and inclusive. Wind and fire speaking in ways that that all can understand. When we ask who is God, we, we can say God is the father, God is creator. God is the Son. God is Jesus. But also we want to say here that God is the Spirit, this sustainer. Sustaining, you see, is strengthening what has already been started. What was started with Jesus is continuing now by the Spirit. Sustaining then is encouraging, it's supporting, it's helping, it's comforting You want proof of what the Spirit's doing? Peter suggests paying attention to what you see and hear. In other words, when the Spirit gets involved, we're going to experience something. The the Spirit isn't just something we think about. The Spirit is something we live, right? It's it's something's going to happen. We might ask, are their lives being changed? Are, Are there dreams and visions? Is a community of of women and men, old and young, daughters and sons from all backgrounds and all ethnicities being brought together? Are people hearing the good news in a way that they can understand? If the answer is yes, then that's the work of the Spirit. It's God on the move. It's amazing and wonderful and perplexing and you could miss it. You see, the thing about a party, I, I've been told this lie my whole life. Every party needs a pooper. I think that's wrong. I think what we need is more partiers. We need more people to, to recognize the celebration breaking out around us and to join in. Another follower of Jesus who got it, Paul, will write to the church to help them identify, help them figure out is is. Is this something God's in the middle of? Is is the Spirit working here? In Galatians 5, 22 to 25, Paul says this, The fruit, the evidence of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This evidence, this fruit of the Spirit, against such things there is no law. There is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Hey, church. Hey, followers of Jesus. If you want to know if God's in the middle of what you're doing, 
Look for the evidence of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. If you see that fruit, if you see that evidence, God's in the middle of it. If you don't, then you need to start asking some questions about what's going on. If we live by the Spirit, let's keep in step with the Spirit, Paul says. Let let us let the Spirit live in us and through us. Let the Spirit help us. That's what the Spirit does. The Spirit's the sustainer, the encourager, the comforter, the supporter, the helper. So let's let the Spirit help us live this life that's been started by Jesus. When we walk into a room, those of us who are following Christ, when we walk into a room, the darkness should become less. The very atmosphere should change. A fresh wind should blow into that place and into those lives the lives of those gathered there. Fire should light up the room and warm the hearts of not just some, but all we encounter. We should be those that bear the fruit of the Spirit. Those who provide the evidence that the Spirit's living in us and through us. So I say that my love, our Love is to be for all. Let me be very clear here. My role, my job, your role, your job is not to judge others, not to criticize others, not to correct others. Can you hear me, friends? The the working out, the day-to-day living of our love is to be an unconditional embrace of others. All means all. I don't see anywhere in here that a fruit of the Spirit is criticism. That a fruit of the Spirit is judgment. I don't see that anywhere. What I see is that we should be those that express love. And that can look like joy and kindness and goodness. You see, instead of of being a party pooper... I've been gifted the opportunity, you've been gifted the opportunity to shine Christ's light into all the world. And that gift is given to us when we receive the Spirit. When the Spirit is poured out over us and into us and through us. Recently, I had an opportunity to go to the Department of Motor Vehicles, the DMV. Now, I don't know, show of hands real quick here. Um, favorite places on earth? DMV? Anybody? DM, DM, anybody out there? DMV? DMV is generally uh, hell on earth, right? It is not a place anybody wants to go. No, oh, you know, they, they sometimes uh, uh, make improvements. Uh, recently, um, there have been some technological advances that have made that experience a little bit easier, but the DMV, I recently was able to to visit, didn't have any of that. They've recently moved locations, and what was a a rough experience was made worse. (laughs) I don't know what they were thinking when they moved. I don't know why you'd even open your doors without it being at least as horrible as it was before. But something, I'm going to call it the Spirit, was in me this day. When I walked through the doors and saw the crowd gathered, I knew I was going to be in for a wait. The electronic machines where I would normally check in were absent, not present at all. I was directed up to the counter with a a whole group of folks telling me that's where I needed to go. The lady who uh, checked me in uh, couldn't hear very well. And when I asked her some questions about, I just want to make sure I've got everything I need, she was not very helpful. She did tell me my wait would be approximately an hour. And so I sat down. But I'm telling you, friends, the Spirit was in me. I did not dread this experience. I did not go in grumbling and complaining. When I went up and talked to this lady, I had a smile on my face. I smiled at the people I walked past. When I sat down in my seat to prepare for my hour-long wait, 
I said, you know what this place needs? It needs some board games. I don't know who was listening. I began to engage the gal behind me who was very helpful in telling me she had just done what I was doing on that day and that, yes, it looked like I had all the right paperwork. Great. As people began to get called in for their various things, somebody was going up to get their license. Stephen? Stephen? Right, they're calling the names, right? Because there's no electronic thing that shows your name up on a board. People have no idea when they're next. Oh, they were so frustrated. I sat there and I said, as Stephen got up, I said, you've got it, Stephen. Go for it. I just started encouraging people. Somebody's going to go get their trailer license. I said, you show them what it's about. Go get it. I was just encouraging folks. I, I, a, a gal needed a place to set. I got up and let her have my seat. You would have thought that I gave somebody $1,000. We just started having fun. And I started thinking to myself, I just came into hell on earth. And I could come in here and complain and argue and be grumpy. And there was plenty of that around me. Or I could be a light in that place. I could smile and crack jokes and encourage folks and offer small kindness, kindness when it was possible. I've been to the DMV a lot of times. But on this day, I was making friends. I was cheerleading. I was, I was letting the Spirit Shine in that place. Can you hear me, friends? We have a choice each and every moment of each and every day. Will we criticize? Will we complain? Will we judge? Or will we let the Spirit blow a fresh wind and light hearts on fire and speak the good news in a language that people can understand? We get to be a part of that. We are invited into that movement of the Spirit. Oh, it was delightful. It was wonderful. I was there probably an hour and a half. The lady who I finally got to see at the counter misspelled our name three times wrong. I could have raised my fist and raised my voice and, and acted like it was the most inconvenience I've ever experienced. I'm telling you, the Spirit was in me. And I offered her grace and I was patient and I was kind and encouraging. It's not a pat on my back. It's what the Spirit can do if we just let the Spirit do it. Here at... North Cross, we have a, a team of, of ushers, greeters. You won't get to experience them here online, and oh, I wish you could. Every time that it's their opportunity, it's a team. Every time it's their opportunity to serve in this way, they coordinate their outfits. They get so excited about it. They bring a joy to hold and open the door and helping people come in to worship. They don't have to do that, but they let the Spirit move in and through them. It's a wonderful thing to experience. We have an all-generation serve day where we, we literally have people across our, our spectrum as far as ages go show up and serve together. And they have fun doing it. They, they, they enjoy each other's company. And, and, and because of their enjoyment of one another, that spills over into the work they do and the people they encounter and, 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 and the ways in which they share that joy. They're, they're not just giving people food or clothing. They're sharing the literal love of Christ. And it's amazing. It's, a, it's wonderful. They don't have to do it. They get to do it. And they allow the Spirit to do it through them. If we're not experiencing more joy, we may be out of step with the Spirit. If we're not sharing more love, we might be missing the work that God is doing and wants to do in and through us. 
God is the life of the party, the literal life. We are made in God's image and we bear God's nature. So we should be the life of the party. We should be the ones people just gravitate toward because they gravitate toward the God in us, the spirit in us. So our goal, this this is my challenge for you. Live in such a way that someone will wonder if you're drunk. Live in such a way that your joy is so audacious. It's so out, out, just so, so crazy, so wild. Somebody just goes, what is going on with that person? Why are they so excited? Why are they having so much fun? They're in the DMV cracking jokes. What's going on with that person? And how do I get whatever they have? That's the goal. If you go back to Acts 2, Peter shares what the Spirit's doing and and why the Spirit has come, and thousands come to accept Jesus Christ. Can you hear that? Oh, it's amazing. When people let the Spirit move, lives are changed. Oh, friends, I don't know why you're here. Are you looking for the answer to some deep question? Are you just trying to keep your partner happy? Or are you ready for life change? Are you ready to change the planet? Do you want to be part of something that's so amazing, so big, so (laughs) incredible that other people just don't know how to make sense of it? Oh, friends, if that is you, then say yes to the Spirit. God is the Spirit, and the Spirit is ready to fall upon us again. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, oh, powerful spirit, wind, oh, and fire, come. Breathe new life into us. Burn away anything that prevents us from fully pursuing you and your love. Help us, comfort us, encourage us, support us in the work you would have us do of loving this world. It's in the name of Christ that I pray these things. Amen. We have an opportunity now to respond to this word by offering our gifts back to God through the church. Uh, You'll see different ways that you can do that, either mailing a gift to um, the address on your screen, using the North Cross app, which is uh, on your app store, Um, visiting playlearnshare.org or texting the number um, to give. I do pray that this would be an act of worship for you, that this would be a response uh, to what God is doing and will continue to do in our lives. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Come down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. the gates let heaven on in come rest on us come rest on us fire and wind come and do it again open up the gates let heaven on in come rest on us come rest on us come down spirit when 
you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you will fill me. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Come down, spirit. When you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Yes, Spirit, come rest on us. Spirit, come fill us, change us, help us, propel us out into the world where we can love and share this good news. We're not meant to contain it. We're meant to give it away. So, so Spirit, come and do your thing. Friends, I hope that you've heard something that you've experienced something, that you know something of the power of the Spirit. I don't know everything about God. None of us can. But I do know this. We We can see the Spirit. We can hear the Spirit. We can know God through the Spirit. And so I pray as you go forth that that's exactly what you've experienced here and that's exactly what you want to share with others, that the people will come alongside you and, 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 and just want to know more about your love and joy and peace and patience. They, they want to come alongside you and know about your excitement, your care. So go in peace. Go with the power of the Spirit. Be blessed now and always. Amen. Friends, as you go, I want to invite you to come back. That's the rhythm that we have as the church. We gather to be scattered and then we gather again. So I'm going to invite you to come back next week where we share more about who is God and how might we understand God and and what does it practically mean for us in our lives. I want to invite you to, again, consider next steps. What might you do to grow deeper in this love? And if there's an opportunity available through us here at North Cross, let us know. We, we want to support you in that. We want to come alongside you in that. And so watch those announcements as they scroll. If there's a class or an opportunity that you'd like to know more about, please reach out to us. You can find more information at the website, playlearnshare.org, or if any of the contact information that will be uh, scrolling along on those slides. Again, friends, I pray God's blessing upon you that the Spirit might fill you to overflowing. Amen. So like the rain, come drench us in love And let your glory rush in like a flood
I can see it now, your kingdom come. I can hear it now, the sound of heaven. You said that if we ask, we'll receive. We are asking for the greater measure. So like the rain, come drench us in love. And let your power 